One of the main reasons why the Raptors were number 12 in the East last year is because they were the only team that didn't have a home arena. They had to spend all 72 games on the road. With a budding two-way superstar in the under-talked-about OG Ananobi, along with a low-key top role player in Gary Trent Jr., and the Ukrainian 24-year-old sniper and Habib lookalike in Svi Mihailuk, Toronto's quietly an elite team. So this video shows you why the Raptors are confusing their opponents and how they've chalked up an impressive 5-3 record, all with their former All-Star and now their rookie sensation sidelined with injuries. As you'll find out, the 2019 champs, who got one win from the conference finals in the bubble, are making last year's 27-win season look like merely a bump in the road amidst a long era of success from Asai and Bobby Webster. Deflow Toronto is my Raptors channel, where I just posted a video on why Toronto will make the playoffs. Go subscribe to that account, links in the description, as I'll post the majority of my Raps content on that channel. Again, that's Deflow Toronto. I also pinned the link in the comments section. On this channel, Deflow Hoops, for Raptors vids combined with other teams and player videos, help me reach 50k by subscribing. Also leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Given Pascal Siakam was already out, when Scotty Barnes injured his thumb after dropping 21-12 in the previous win against Indiana, it seemed like Toronto's recent hot streak would come to an end. Without two of their most valuable players in Spicy and Scotty, the Raps flew into New York to play in the NBA's loudest arena right now. On this night, the NBA celebrated its 75th anniversary, honoring former Knicks legends exactly 75 years after the Knicks beat the now defunct Toronto Huskies 68-66 in the inaugural game of what was then the Basketball Association of America. New York had a 15-point lead in the first half behind Canadian RJ Barrett, who finished with 27. With Toronto's injuries, it seemed like it was going to be a predictable outcome, and the rolling Knicks were about to go 6-1. And while New York took their foot off the gas pedal at times, it was really the flurry from four out of five members in Toronto's starting lineup that started to get going and get back into the game. They went on a late second quarter run and outscored the currently third-seeded New York Knicks 38-22 in quarter number three. OG, Gary, Svi, and Freddie combined for 13 triples. The Raps won the battle on the glass, out-rebounding New York 48-41 and Toronto collectively displayed the lockdown clamps on defense, which led them to a championship a couple years ago. Without their second score from the 2019 Finals and 2020 All-Star Pascal Siakam, and also missing their soon-to-be Rookie of the Year Scotty Barnes, the Prodi OG Ananobi carried the squad with a clutch, game-high and career-best 36 points. OG doesn't take shots to miss, as he said after the .5 game winner in the second round against Boston back in the bubble. This win on Monday night gave Toronto their fourth straight in the early going, and even though the season's still young, it's not outlandish to start envisioning how good the Raps can eventually be when they get to full strength. Don't forget, the Raps could easily be 6-2 right now if Fred Van Vliet forces overtime by hitting this three against the Raging Bulls. The number one seeded 6-1 Bulls, who pulled off an insane comeback in Boston last night, were given one of their toughest challenges so far when they visited Scotiabank last week. The Raptors' tough, intelligent, and lengthy switch-everything defense can be scored upon in certain stretches of the game if the opposing team has the right matchup. But most of the time, the Raptors' rotations and activity in terms of their help on the back end of possessions shuts down the attacking player or at the very least, forces them into shooting a jumper, because no one wants to attack the basket against the Raps right now. After eight games, Toronto ranks number one in the NBA in the fewest paint points allowed per game. Additionally, the Raptors rank number one in the NBA so far in steals per game, and they rank number eight in defensive rating. The first reason Toronto is so confusing for their opponents right now is simply due to the fact that when other teams are scouting for the Raps, they underestimate the talent of the team as a whole. They may implement certain effective strategies to shut down, say, OG, but individual player defensive game plans are far from what determines a team's success on this end of the floor. A team's effort is actually predicated upon how the 15 men on the roster view the legitimacy of their opponent. 
Right now, from another team's perspective, they view Toronto as a team that's going to bottom feed given they have basically the same personnel from their 27-45 and 45 season. What these teams aren't realizing is that OG Ananobi, who's practically unknown to the mainstream sports media by the way, has developed every aspect of his game. He still needs to work on his consistency, but at 6 foot 8 and 230 pounds of pure muscle, combined with the ball handling ability of a player half a foot shorter than him, Ananobi's turned into an absolute scoring beast in year 5 of his career. His 25 and 3 averages to go along with first team all defense type stopping make him the team's number one option right now and give Toronto an excellent 1A slash second option once Siakam returns. I know OG's shooting line of 41.3 slash 35.3 from the field and from deep isn't that great, but his relentless takeoffs to the basket plus his three point bombs preceded by slick dribble combos to freeze his defenders are impactful points that swing momentum and intimidate his opponents. OG's taken on the brunt of the scoring load and been the team's biggest leader on and off the floor, so big time credit to OG, hoping this man can keep it up though. Before showing you the main reason for the Raptors being a head scratching opponent, let's check in on the Raps head coach. Nick Nurse continues to prove himself as one of the best motivators and strategic coaches in the NBA. From keeping the right vibe in the locker room to his timely timeouts and well thought out challenges, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from the Raps man in charge. This is really different from how I felt last year at this time with Nurse as in Tampa playing all 72 games on the road. I think that got to him mentally, but now sleeping in his own bed, tricky Nicky Nick Nurse is back bringing the intensity on the sidelines and much needed persona in the locker room that makes the Raptors system what it is. Coach of the year is definitely an award Nurse could win for the second time in 2022. Now let's get into the main reason for the Raptors leaving their opponents stunned right now which is the completely under the radar role players who are stepping up as top scorers with Siakam and Barnes out. Gary Trent Jr. was mentioned as the Raptors secret weapon in this video, I posted that a few weeks ago, and Gary's lived up to that analysis. This guy can legitimately chain together moves off the dribble and get his own shot under pressure, and he doesn't even need a screen to do it. GTJ is going off so far this season, and that was signified by a beastly 26 piece at the world's most famous arena. The man also added four steals, but for the most part, Gary was hitting crucial shots at the Garden all night long. Trent's been making massive plays on both ends of the floor. He had a game winning steal against Orlando, and he's shown off effort in every one of these games that's been crucial. It's a young season, but Gary's easily been the most under talked about contributor for the Raps. Man dropped 44 last season after coming over from Portland in the Norman Powell trade, and Trent's found that type of shooting rhythm again in the early going this year. Another blasphemously underrated Raps player is their rebounding big man up front in Kem Birch. Precious Achua's been disappointing so far, taking out of control shots, but Birch has started to play crunch time minutes for the team, and he's evidently the Raps most valuable five man. Birch is surprisingly quick, and he's got a high defensive IQ, but keeping possessions alive and boxing out low post phenoms are the most crucial qualities provided by Kem. Birch was a plus 20 in the Raps win last night against the Knicks. He averaged 12 and 8 on the 12th seeded Raps last year, and while his minutes are down this season, Birch ranks number 6 among all Raptors in player efficiency rating. Ranking number 1 in that area is Svi Mihailuk, who's shown off that he's much more than just a deep range shooter. Svi's sweet moves off the dribble and springy hops have been on display all year. Mahai Luke still has some upside given he's only 24 years old. Speaking of upside, Delano Banton just about defines the word potential. The 6'9", Lamelo Ball-esque shot creator provides the defensive value of a player that's been in the league for 5 plus years. Yet another player who can give you 10 to 20 points on any given night is the man I like to call the Boosh. Chris Boucher's high arcing trigger on his three pointer allows him to release the ball over about any player in basketball. At the end of the bench, you have a nifty shot creator in the product of San Diego and Malachi Flynn, a former all star in Goran Dragic, the undrafted 18 point scorer in college and Justin Champagny on the wing, 
and the team's biggest cheerleader, but also a guy I think can end up producing some value in the former Houston Rocket and overseas player, Sam Decker. Toronto is of course fueled by the big buckets from the team's closer in the undrafted four-year legend of Wichita State University, Fred Van Vliet, to go along with the aforementioned OG Ananobi. However, what really makes this team a threat is that now the pieces around those two are in place for this team to ultimately return to the playoffs and potentially earn a top five seed. With that said, go check out my video on D-Flow Toronto talking about why I think Toronto will make the playoffs in 2022. Let's be friends and stay updated on the vids by following me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlow Hoops. Hope you have a great one. This was DFlow. See you next video.